Well, it appears there is controversy going viral about Melanie Martinez once again. I didn't see it the first time. Y'all know I am a new, a newbie Melanie Martinez fan. I love what she does. I don't know anything about her history, the backstory or anything. But as a mental health professional, as a therapist, I thought, wow, if this thing's out there, I want to hear what's happened in the past and be able to kind of judge it off of what the different stories are that are being told. So Melanie Martinez, Faithful, join me on this because I feel like I'm as unbiased, even though I really like what she does. I don't know her as a person, never met her, but I want to hear what people have to say. The Melanie Martinez controversy is going viral again without further ado. What happened in this whole story? I don't even know what all happened. But hopefully this tells me. Today, we're talking about the controversy surrounding Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller. Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller allegations explain what happened that led to a to new statement. What is... When what? I was 24, so... I don't know where this and how the singer's history of concerning allegations is being brought back up after her former best friend recently posted this viral TikTok. So this I actually saw a snippet of, but I couldn't understand what any of it was about. So I scrolled on. That's the thing with TikTok, right? You just scroll on. When I wrote this story about my I initially wasn't going to make, but I think it's important for you all to know this is about Melanie Martinez. So it's Timothy Heller, that's the other one here, that I guess has come out and maybe has said there was uh, some bad things that happened in the past. And it's now time to reveal that. Or maybe it was revealed before, or maybe it's revealed in a new way now. Let's do this. And Timothy Heller. Okay. And how the singer's history of concerning allegations is being brought back up after her former best friend recently posted this viral TikTok, explaining the massive wave of hate she received back in 2017 after sharing that she was essayed by Melanie. With things becoming so dangerous at one point that she was ultimately forced to shut down her music career. But I pulled together all of the details and context Dangerous. that you need to know in order to get caught up like on this situation involving Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller. Today's story was sent to me by Louis Vuitton Bagel, Dia Sophia, j Row, and... Let me see that. So essayed by Melanie. With things becoming so dangerous at one point that she was ultimately forced to shut down her music career. So I, but I pulled together all of the details. So she had a music career and had social media and everything, but had to shut that down. And I don't know if that's because people coming at her or all of the, I don't know. Details and context that you need to know in order to get caught up on this situation involving Melanie Martinez and Timothy Heller. Today's story was sent to me by Louis Vuitton Bagel, Dia Sophia, j Row, and Zoe. If you ever come across something you think I should cover, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. And if you want to catch the next story I cover, please consider subscribing. But even if you don't, thank you so much just for watching. Now let's get into it. This is Melanie Martinez, a 29 year old singer from New York City who became famous after appearing on season three of the singing competition show, The Voice. However, over the past seven years, some extremely concerning allegations have been tied to her name. And just recently, they've all resurfaced again after a TikTok was posted by the original person making the allegations. But before we go through that, let's quickly recap everything that's happened in this timeline so far from the beginning. Thank you. First, this is, what this I is want. Timothy Heller, a singer and former best friend of Melanie's. So was a best friend. I don't know how old, like when they were best friends, I don't know how Timothy, how old Timothy Heller was. I don't know how old Melanie Martinez was. Was it after The Voice? Was it during The Voice? Was it? But apparently had a singing career, 3,780 monthly listeners, Sleep, the most popular song. Back in November of 2017, Timothy okay. said this on Twitter. So 2017, we're at least getting a timeline here. So far from the beginning. First, this is Timothy Heller, a singer and former best friend of Melanie's. Okay. Back in November of 2017, Timothy said this on Twitter. What if I have my own story of abuse, but I'm scared to ruin the person's life and I still love them in an effed up way and the public still loves them and most probably wouldn't believe me. 
A few weeks later, Timothy opened up more about the situation by tweeting this ago. on December 4th, 2017. When I wrote this story about my assault, I initially wasn't going to name the abuser, but I think it's important for you all to know this is about Melanie Martinez. The tweet includes mm. four images of text that describe the incident in further detail. Big content warning for people that are sensitive to discussions about SA. The statement begins with Timothy saying they were R-worded by their best friend Melanie and felt they had to keep this secret for years. At the bottom of the first image, she mentions that Melanie let her down at the lowest point of her life. And at one point, I want to see this. I kept this secret for years, convincing myself that it wasn't a big deal and I wasn't hurt by it. The thought of accepting that my best friend, um, me seems insane. Even typing this, even typing that doesn't feel real to me. I started telling this story to those closest to me as somewhat of a joke. Ha ha, can you believe this crazy night? But it began, uh, but I began to get responses I wasn't expecting, concerned ones. It's hard to say someone you love would do that to Your you. Your best friend, Melanie. And felt they had to keep this secret for years. At the bottom of the first image, she mentions that Melanie... When faced with a friend who really needed help, though, I can honestly say she let me down completely. During the most difficult time in my life, my rock bottom, her power and control over me grew and grew. And I was silenced. While being open about realizing how much I help I needed, I was made to feel guilty. I had to apologize for having an extreme panic attack where I thought I was going to die because it ruined her night. Endless incidents like, like this. Let her down at the lowest point of her life. And at one point, she made Timothy apologize for having an extreme panic attack because it ruined her night. And Timothy stresses that there were endless nights like this. I don't know Timothy Eller. I don't know Melanie Martinez. I know there are two sides to every story all the time. And most of the time, each side story is not completely accurate. I know that as a therapist, having people in my office, couples in my office, families in my office, that there's different versions. Basically, Timothy Heller saying all this stuff happened and now I'm realizing how much it's damaged me and I want to be able to bring this out because it's not right to just have it disappear. And Melanie Martinez did these things to me, made me feel horrible for them, and now I'm paying the price mentally and emotionally for it, I think is what's On happening. pages two through four, she explains this happening. One night during a sleepover, she became increasingly interested in my sexual preferences. As someone who had previously been through sexual abuse, sex is hard for me to talk about. I was obviously uncomfortable, but she was my best friend, so I tried to be open about it. You know what's interesting? I would love to know how they became best friends. Like, were they best friends before Melanie was famous? After? Uh, how did they connect to begin with? And what are their age differences? Or are they the same? The conversation never seemed to end, though. I had to work very early in the morning. She began asking me while in bed if I would have sex with her. While being incredibly uncomfortable by this offer, I attempted to laugh it off. I had a boyfriend at this time, and she knew that. Quote, he doesn't have to know. It's not a big deal. It went on for hours, asking me why I didn't want to, that it would be fun. I repeatedly said no. I had work in the morning. I just mm. wanted to sleep. I was exhausted. I attempted to sleep, but was kept up the entire night by my friend begging me to sleep with her. It seemed strange, but she was my best friend. I said no, and I thought we could move on. The next night, unfortunately, went the exact same way. Regardless of my response the first night. What's interesting to me here is what would keep you at this point from saying, you know, I'm uncomfortable to yourself. I'm uncomfortable. I need to get out. I need to escape this. Am I trapped here? Like just find a way to go home, to go to a different place, to I got a call. I need to get, you know, go meet somebody. I don't know something at this point. I'm wondering what the relationship was like. Uh, or do you feel trapped where I have to stay here? Because th this was one night and then there's the next night. And if you're that uncomfortable, what what stopped that? And I don't know the story. Not judging, just trying to s figure out and put the links together. I, here. She was not giving up. If she had gotten the hint, she didn't care. I was exhausted. She convinced me to smoke weed. And since I have a hard time saying no to her, I complied. Again, if they're adults, I don't know their ages at this point. If they're adults uh, and somebody's convincing you to smoke weed, you have a choice of whether you smoke weed. Remember, life's a series of choices over time. This is not going back and pointing fingers. This is saying it's so critical, I think, for people to think ahead in life and where they are. You decide... And she was so strong in the first night to say, no, I don't want any of this, even though the pressure was on. You can say that with weed, too. I don't want to smoke. It's not my thing. I don't feel like doing it. And I don't want to put myself in a compromising position. 
applied, thinking maybe then I'd be able to just fall asleep and avoid the situation altogether. The same conversation began to happen, continuously trying to convince me it was going to be okay and it would be fun and feel good. I would say, my boyfriend would be so upset. I really need to sleep. I have work in the morning. I said every form of no I could think of. As I lay praying to fall asleep, she began touching my arm. I allowed this to happen. Maybe she'd give up. This went on for maybe an hour. I got increasingly uncomfortable. I started giggling, saying that it tickled. I, in no way, wanted to make this a sexual situation. Quote, can I just do this? Can I just touch your arm? Can I just touch your boobs? She began bartering with me. Mm. All I wanted to do was go to sleep. She began talking about the appearance of my boobs and begged to just touch them. We didn't have to do anything else. I was so exhausted and confused and high and belittled, I just allowed it to happen. This led to her touching the rest of me. I never said yes, I said no repeatedly, but she used her power over me and broke me down. Just so there is no confusion, I was molested by my best friend. I lay still, in shock, completely not reciprocating. I said no for two nights straight. It doesn't matter that I didn't resist during the action. I had been broken down. She knew mm. I didn't want to. I made that clear. I didn't scream at her. I didn't force her off of me. One, because I loved her. Two, because I just wanted it to all be over. We never talked about this night ever again. I was wondering after all this happened, what? so how do you continue on then? Like what's the relationship then? Is there this big power differential? where she has to just keep doing that? Or do you just kind of awkwardly not stay around each other or spend the night around each other at this point? Or do you talk about it at all? Because it would you would think in this scenario, it would make you want to get away and not be around her anymore. And maybe that's what happened. While it completely messed with my head, there was no way I could have been R-worded by my best friend, right? Our friendship ended because she decided she didn't have time for me anymore. But when did it end? Like right after that, it was kind of done? Or was it weeks after that, months after that? To worry about me anymore. She cared too much about me. It was holding her back. During the rest of the statement, Timothy expresses her worry about coming out with the story, believing it won't have the same impact as if a man shared the same exact experience. Following this, less than 24 hours later, Melanie responded, Hmm, so Melanie did respond. Very interesting. I wonder what she said. On Twitter. And claimed that Timothy never said no to any of her advances. I am horrified and saddened by the statements and story told tonight by Timothy Heller. What she and I shared was a close friendship for a period of time. We came into each other's lives as we were both starting our careers as artists. And we tried okay. to help each other. We both had pain we both dealing starting. with our individual demons and the new paths we were forging. But I truly felt we were trying to lift each other up. She never said no to what we chose to do together. And although we parted ways, I'm sending her love and light always. That is very interesting. So Melanie's saying she never said no. Very clearly. She never said no to what we chose to do together. Two completely different stories. That's the question mark. You know, what exactly happened? Melanie deserves to be heard just as much as Timothy Heller deserves to be heard. Every person in the world deserves to have their story heard. You can pick which side you believe. I don't think there's a way to tell exactly what happened here unless you have your own opinions. I like to gather as much information as I can. I always feed off better when I'm with somebody and I can see them and hear them and kind of get a story down and see the body language, hear the tone of voice. So it's very hard when you're reading text to see what might have happened, but it's be interesting to see how young were they when they started, when they got together and became friends, and then how quickly before it got to this incident of these two nights, and then how quickly after the two nights did everything stop? Like, did Melanie the very next day say, that's it, we're done, or did it go on and linger after that? It's pretty weird to respond to somebody saying they didn't consent to you touching them by just claiming they never said no. I mean, just the fact that she had a boyfriend at the time means she definitely didn't say yes. But since she didn't say no, I guess it must have been fine. But Timothy- But people have boyfriends and girlfriends all the time and mess around with other people. There are open relationships everywhere. So the fact that, you know, I have a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. I've seen plenty of people that have boyfriends that mess around with other people. And, you know, that might be a thing for them. So it's not just because you have a boyfriend, it's a no. He didn't say yes, but since she didn't say no, I guess it must have been fine. But Timothy responded to Melanie's tweet the next day on December 5th. 
during an interview with Newsweek for an article covering the situation. According to Heller, 20 minutes after she posted the first tweet, Martinez tried to contact her. It was the first time Heller had heard from her in more than a year. I started sobbing when I saw Melanie was calling me, and I blocked her, mm. Heller said. Martinez then tried calling Heller's boyfriend, Mikey, and sent him several text messages asking him to put her in touch with Heller. In Martinez's text messages, which Newsweek has read, the 22-year-old singer says she recently dreamed about Heller, and that inspired her to get in touch. Martinez also mm. suggests the services of a healer named Raven, which Heller said she found insane and deeply insulting. Timothy also specifies that the night everything first took place was June 25th, 2015. After this, things took a darker turn. As so June 25th, 2015 was when that happened, right? It was June 25th insulting. Timothy also specifies that the night everything first took place was June 25th, 2015. After this, things took a darker turn. As many fans loyal to Melanie started to go back through Timothy's old Instagram photos to put together a timeline. I don't even know how old all these people are or how old Melanie is, but 2015, that would be nine years ago. I'm guessing they were early 20s? that invalidated Timothy's story. An act that was supported by Melanie a few days later on December 10th, 2017, when she posted this follow-up tweet thanking her fans for revealing Timothy's false statements. I understand how hard it could be to see my side of the story, considering no one with a heart would want to invalidate anyone speaking up about this topic. I want to thank my fans who took the time to research the timeline, analyze past Instagram photos, and question the story being told, which reveal her false statements. This is what I need to see is the timeline of everything, how it's laid out, Instagram photos, when stories were told, what really happened. Like, does the timeline line up with what Timothy Heller was saying when these things happened and also with Melanie? I trusted so many people in my life who took advantage of that trust for their own personal gain. Please know that my intentions with everything I do in my life are always pure and I would never be intimate with someone without their absolute consent. Since this point, over the next seven years, Timothy Heller was mostly radio silent on the internet, likely due to the mass amount of hate she was receiving mm. because of Melanie's response. However, just a few days ago, on July 19th, she came back and explained everything in a six minute long TikTok posted to the account Frick My Life 500. Here's how Timothy starts the video. Speaking out against my abuser ruined my life and I'd like to talk to you about it. I'm gonna be reading something I wrote it's not particularly well written, but I just needed to collect my thoughts. Whether you know who I am or not, I ask you to please listen to my story. If you do recognize me, then you haven't heard from me in a couple of years. That's because I was effectively run off the internet. You also may have heard that I admitted to lying or that it was proven that I lied. Neither are true. Speaking out against my abuser ruined my life. After this, she goes through the timeline of events that we've covered so far. Then adding this. After my initial statement, describing in detail what happened, my abuser issued a statement in response. She used the sentence, she never said no to what we chose to do together. While I did say no in many different ways, mm. the sentence was actually quite validating for me to hear. She clearly didn't understand how consent works and she admitted that something took place between us. I wish it ended there. Following this, she- So she did, yeah. She admitted to something taking place and said, Timothy Heller never said no. Timothy Heller says, that's not true. And, and says, I said no in many different ways. And so I'm wondering how that played out between the two of them. How did you say no? And how did you feel no? And how did you express it? And how did it literally come out? Because for me, I want somebody to feel strong enough with their boundaries to say, if, if you cross this line one more time, I need to go. I can't stay here. I won't be a part of this. And especially into that second night, that's where I can't rem I can't put the pieces together of what keeps you staying unless you're trapped and held there. What keeps you staying in that environment and then choosing to smoke weed? Anyway, she confused. explains the mistake she made when providing the date of the incident to the Daily Mail media outlet, saying that she remembered an old photo that was taken right after the date of the incident. So she went back through her camera roll, then found the photo and gave them the assumed date. 
but she didn't realize that it was a screenshotted duplicate from a later time. So this led to her giving them the wrong date, which led to Melanie Martinez fans comparing the date to mm, Timothy's okay. Instagram photo, I see. claiming that she had to be making up the whole story. Since based on her Instagram, she was seemingly not with Melanie during that time. Ultimately, this is what made Melanie tweet out her second statement, thanking the fans for seemingly disproving Timothy's whole story even though this is just a minor mistake and shouldn't invalidate the whole experience. Is this person kind of on the side of Timothy Heller? It sounds like it, but I don't know if this person's just trying to report this and balance it out, but it sounds like maybe not. But the TikTok continues with Timothy responding to that statement from Melanie. After this discovery, she released a second statement in which she thanks her fans for researching the timeline and analyzing past Instagram posts, which reveal my false statements. Unfortunately, this was enough for 99% of her fans to take what she said as truth and deem me a liar. She then describes more hate she received after this statement went out which only added to the trauma. The events after this are so much and so overwhelming, it's hard for me to recount. She ended up releasing essentially a diss track about me with lyrics perpetuating the idea that I lied mm. about all of this for fame. I was a small musician was at the time, and after speaking What's out, gained tens of thousands I mean, of followers. While there were some supporters, the majority of the followers were people who actively hated me. I suddenly had thousands of hate accounts dedicated to me, thousands of dislikes and negative comments on all of my music, and completely ridiculous fabricated stories of me being posted online. Timothy goes on to explain how these people calling her a liar flooded all of her social media outlets and opportunities with comments claiming that she lied about being essayed. This cut her off from practically every single sponsorship and brand deal. Mm. And things only got worse because these same haters would leak her home address and family's oh. phone numbers regularly. Say this is That's just where it gets wrong. Like, I don't think anybody should do that. You shouldn't be leaking stuff. You shouldn't be trying to to just denigrate and completely tear apart somebody. I don't think it's fair to do that. I think, uh, you know, there's, when you're on social media, you're susceptible to social media. So I understand that there may be people who dislike, people who comment, people who, you know, set out to say this person's not worth believing and I don't trust them, but not to bring it into their home and their family saying that this forced her to stop pursuing a music career. This then led her to try to get a start in sex work. However, she talks about how that was quickly ruined too. I started doing SW in a town. Wow. So going into sex work after this, which, you know, doesn't help the credibility of anything. I think what Timothy Heller's saying is I needed to find a way to make a living. I needed to find a way to have money, support myself, I guess. But wow, was it because of the trauma that you went into the sex work? Man, I'd love to talk to Timothy Heller. Because of the trauma or was it because of survival and just trying to make it? Or was it just your next thing to do? However, she talks about how that was quickly ruined too. I started doing SW in an attempt to regain some autonomy. But that was taken from me as well when people who hated me hacked the account. I was just trying to move on. Mm. My adult content was being spread and mocked by the people who hated me. Every single one of my social media accounts was hacked, including my email. The only thing they didn't get into was my bank account. Over the next minute and a half, Timothy explains just how severely her mental health has been shaken by the situation and how it culminated in her deleting all of her music related socials a couple years ago just to get away from that. But if you want to be known as an artist and you want to make a comeback or you want to try to revitalize your image, what's the purpose in doing sex work? That part I can't understand. And then basically saying now I've been kind of pushed off everything. Hey, then she wraps up the video with this. I didn't do anything wrong. I spoke the truth. If you're familiar with my story, you may have also heard that I admitted to lying, and I can assure you that never happened. There were photoshopped images spread around of a confession that never happened because mm. I have nothing to confess. I never lied. You may have also heard that I accused other celebrities of this, which I can promise you never happened either. There's so many other terrible things that people have made up about me that I'm not going to dissect and defend right now, but I was successfully gaslit into thinking I was a bad person who deserved this. I am so, so scared to speak out about this again. There's a high now that's the part and I, I totally honor people telling their story and being heard because you know you can get gaslit enough eventually with tons of comments and hate coming at you where it's like I need to just get away because maybe this is my fault or maybe I did do something you, you hear it enough it's like interrogation right when you're stuck in a room and you're hearing people come at you all the time you eventually start believing that story but to be able to get some peace, like people just leave her alone for a minute and it 
You can totally disagree with what she's done, said, all of that. There's no reason, though, to continue to just badger someone into the ground. I don't believe. I think we need to just let it be, move on, let Timothy be who she needs to be, let Melanie move on, and... Uh, how do you resolve this? Possibility that I won't receive any support from this and people who hate me will target me again and I go back into hiding. I ask that if you are someone who is under the impression that I lied about this, to please hear me out. Please think about her contradicting statements. Please realize that there's no one on earth who knows what happened that night besides me and her. And even the smallest possibility that I could be telling the truth should be enough for you to not want to risk ruining an innocent person's life in this way. I'm completely exhausted from begging people to believe me for years now. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what I'm hoping will come from this. It's gotten to be quite humiliating to beg people to care. But if you haven't heard my story before, thank you for hearing me. And I could really use your help in rewriting the false narrative of who I am and what happened to me. At this point in the story, we still haven't seen a response from Melanie Martinez regarding this video. However, once she does address things, I may do an update on the second channel. But now that you're caught up with everything that's happened so far in the situation involving Timothy Heller and Melanie Martinez, I need to know, what do you think about everything? Are you a current or former Melanie Martinez fan <laughs> that's been following the allegations? Were you previously aware of this ongoing situation from 2017? Yeah, this is... Uh, Please let me know that. This is quite a video. Melanie Martinez controversy going viral. Well covered. Had a lot of information in there. Has Melanie given a response? If she has, please let me know. I want to see that. I want to react to that. I want to follow this story more. And here's my question on Timothy Heller. When you come back out with this and you talk about your life and how everything's been torn apart and what you want is peace and you want freedom, you want independence, I think there's two ways to go at this. Number one is... You, you, you stay in your lane, you do your thing, you live your life, you hold your conviction, you do the best you can to create, recreate your career, your passion, your love in whatever way you can and try to do that because it's what you're called to do. Or, and you stay, you stay kind of quiet on that. Or you come out like this, say what you need to say, and you recognize what's coming at you. Be genuine, be fair, be honest, and try really hard not to, to batter away all of the hate that's coming, but try to just be true to yourself and try to do the best you can to create music or to be an artist or whatever you want to do. But when you come back out like this, you have to know that everything's going to start coming at you, at least for a little bit, and then maybe it could die down. Would love to talk to either one of these two, Timothy Heller or Melanie Martinez. Probably will never happen, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. As a therapist, a mental health professional, I think... Both need to be heard. And it's not about who's right, who's wrong here. It's about where do we go from here? Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think about this. Fill me in on the gaps that I'm missing and stay tuned for the next part. Give me a link if there is one. And remember, mental health matters. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy.